Well, welcome back for our faithful viewers and for those who are first time. Hey, I'm glad you, you're here. I saved you a seat. The whole purpose of this is to so we can sit down and talk together. I like to think about you being here right here beside me and us discussing um, the Word of God. And I got a great message for you today because of chapter 5 in 1 John. And you know we've been studying that. And if I'd asked you what we said the first week, would you remember? Well, we talked about how do I know? How do you know that um, is, a, is a question, how do you know is a question that is often asked of us when we say a piece of information. And we always respond and it's kind of giving a proof. And you know what? We can ask that question in our spiritual life too. And we, we asked the question in the beginning, how do we know? that we're going to heaven when we die? How, how do we know that the God we serve is the, is the right God? How, how do we know that the YouTubers that are out there are teaching the truth? How do we know? Well, because of that series and because us being in chapter five, the last chapter of 1 John, hey, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna, I'm going to give you three things that the Bible says that we can know. And it's been a result of us learning through the reading and learning through first John uh, the book of the Bible and it's incredible God has given us um, information he has given us truth that we might know beyond the shadow of a doubt in fact is how the message translates part of this passage today so hey you don't want to miss this so don't go away grab your Bibles let's take a look at first John chapter 5 so, here we are to talk about three things that you and I can know. That the Bible says we can know beyond the shadow of a doubt. And I hope that this is an encouraging message for you and even a challenging message to you. And so whether you believe the Bible or not, whether you believe in God or not, we welcome you. We welcome your questions. You can uh, put, put a comment down below. Please subscribe to the channel. Thank you for those who have. It lets you know when we have new videos out. We put videos out every week. At least that's our goal, and we've been able to accomplish that for more than a year now. And so there's lots of, of information on the YouTube channel that talks about different things. So check it out. But I'm glad you're here today. And uh, we never start our study without asking God to open up our hearts and our minds to spiritual truths. And so, would you pray with me? Father, we thank you for each person who has come upon this video. Lord, we know it's not by accident that you have brought them here to speak to them. And I pray, Lord, that you would just open our hearts to the truths of your word. Help us to know the things that you desire for us to know. Help us to understand what you want us to understand today. There's a lot of things in this world we admit we don't understand but your ways are greater than our ways. But these things today that you talk about in your word, you say that we can know. And so, God, we ask you to guide and direct us. We, we thank you for all that you will accomplish today, and we give you the glory and praise. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. And while I was praying there, I just thought about it. Hey, send me an email at fbchapel at zoominternet.net. We would love to pray for your needs or answer your questions. Um, so if you have some prayer requests, please let me know that I might be praying for you and the concerns that you have in your life. Know that we pray for you, but we can pray for you more specifically that way. Hey, let's, look, let's dig into the Word of God, which I, because of the wind out here, I have it copied here. It's not that I'm not using my Bible. I have it written here because you don't want to know what I think. You want to know what the Bible says because believe me, what I think sometimes doesn't match up with what God does, right? God does things that we don't understand. But when we read his word together, he'll teach us. So let's look at it. And the first thing here, let's look at what, what John says in the very last sentences and paragraphs of his letter. It says, I write these things to you to, who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may know. And, and that's the word know here is used multiple times. And he's telling us we can know these things without a sh beyond a shadow of a doubt. Without a, without a doubt. These are things that we can know. And the first one he says is, is it so that you may know that you have eternal life. 
He says, I'm writing these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you might know that you have eternal life. If I was to ask you the question, are, are you going to heaven when you die? I, the number one answer that I get is, I hope so. <laughs> well, I hope you can see that, that John says, and God tells us in his word here, that we can know it. That I hope so is, doesn't have to be our answer. Our answer can be a yes in the affirmative. John tells us we can know. And so the first thing is, I know that I have eternal life. And it says here that, that we can know it and understand it. And it's because it says that we have him. Um, notice I didn't say it. I have, we have him. That's because eternal life is not a thing, but a person. It's Jesus Christ. Look at, look at 512. This is what it says. It says, whoever has the son has life. Whoever does not have the son of God does not have life. So how we treat Jesus is the essential thing to knowing whether we can have eternity or not. He is the one who is life. And everyone that believes that Jesus is the Messiah, verse 1, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. You remember that in John 3, 16, uh, John chapter 3, Jesus is talking to Nicodemus. I brought this up before. And Jesus said, you have to be born again. And it says here, everyone that believes that Jesus is the Christ, the one God promised, the one who died for our sins, is born of God. And John's been telling us that if you're born of God, you will love God by keeping his commands. You will love his, his people, his, his um, family. You will love them. You, you, will, you will not continue to sin. You will continue in a righteous life. There's evidence. And he's saying that you can know whether you are going to heaven or not. He says, I'm writing these things to you who believe in the Son of God, in the name of the Son of God, so that you may know that you have eternal life. See, the reason here is, is because when you answer, I hope so, what are you basing your confidence in? You're probably basing your confidence in, well, I'm a pretty good person. I haven't done anything really bad. Or, I, I'm, you know, I'm better than an average guy. I haven't murdered anyone. But see, you don't know whether you're going to heaven or not. Because you don't know the, the way God will judge that. I think he'll find out I'm a pretty good person. No, the reality is, is that we go to heaven based on our faith. Notice it says in, in verse 1 of chapter 5, everyone who believes. Notice verse 13, I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God. It's by belief, not by our works. So when we trust Christ as our Savior, when we understand that what he did on the cross paid for our sin, we're no longer trusting in our works or our goodness but we're trusting in the goodness of Christ, the one who came and died on a cross for you and me. So when we say, I know I'm going to heaven, I know I have eternal life, that's not prideful. That's basing it on the word of God. John tells us multiple times in here, if you have the son, you have life. He who has not the son has not life. Jesus is the answer. He's the one. So if you've trusted him, if you believe with all your heart that he is the one who died on the cross for you personally, then you can be confident that, that you know him, that you have him. And if these other things like loving his word and loving him and loving his people and going in a direction of, of holiness, they're, they're evidences that you know him. So we can know it. And so I have down here, we can have assurance. Look at what John writes. He says, Verse 14, this is the confidence we have in approaching God. We can have confidence approaching God. Do you have confidence approaching God? Or are you a bit sheepish? Or, or, do you, or do you shirk back because of sin in your life or because you see God as this tyrant? But instead, when we see Christ as our Savior, we see him as the love that he has for us. We see his arms stretched out. And the reality here is, is that we have this relationship with Jesus where he's our Father. And he's saying this is the confidence we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have. It, you see, it's a relationship with God that's been restored. 
as a result of what Christ did. And it's God's promise to us that when we receive the Son, when we accept Christ as the Messiah, the one who God promised to come and to take away our sin, when we believe that, we become his child and he gives us eternal life. And that life is something we have right now because the passage here tells us that the life is in his Son and we have it now. It's not something we have to wait for. It's the life that God wants for us eternal life, a life of, of joy and peace in a world that's upside down. So my question begins with this is, do you know that you have eternal life? Did you know that you can know that? Based on your understanding of Jesus dying on a cross, if you believe that and trust that with your heart, you no longer believe in yourself, but you know that you need a savior, he will save you and he will take you all the way to heaven. I have assurance in that. You know, it's so great to know where you're headed. It's so great to know that this world is not all there is. It's so great to know that the, this next life, for those who've trusted Christ, is way better than the life that we're experiencing now. But we get tastes of it once in a while. That's what it means to follow Jesus. But hey, he's no longer a, ty a tyrant. God becomes this loving father that we understand better. And we're going to get into that a little bit in the last point. But do you have assurance? You know, everything in this world, I've dealt with two different deaths this week, and they were sudden, unexpected. And you know, we don't have any assurance in our job. We can lose our jobs tomorrow. We don't have any assurance with our health. We could lose our health tomorrow, or our life, or our spouse, or can you name anything in the world that gives us assurance? I even thought my life insurance would last until I die, and you know what? They, they sent me a letter and said, no, you're going to have to re-up your insurance. It's going to run out next year. You know, nothing is assured in this life, but Jesus can give us assurance for the life to come. Do you have that assurance? That's not the only thing. He says we can know. Look at, look at verse number 18. We know that anyone born of God, who trusts God, who's been born again, does not continue to sin. The one who was born of God keeps them safe, and the evil one cannot, cannot harm them. This is another great point. Here's what you and I can know when we're in Christ, when we are born of God. We can know that we're conquerors. Now notice that this verse does not say does not sin. It says does not continue to sin. In other words, our life becomes more and more like Christ. And we've been given the ability, His Holy Spirit, to live in us to, so that we might live a righteous life, that we might live a holy life. And so the reality here is, is that there's a conflict though. The reason why we don't is we have our old nature, but we also have the world around us. And, and that gives us some struggles because there's the world and its system. Look at what he says here. We know that we are children of God and that the whole world is under the control of the evil one. So we've got Satan who is against us. There's this conflict. There's, there's this conflict of the world's ways, which is its morals and beliefs and systems that's run by Satan. And then there's there's the believer, the child of God, who's been given new life, but he's still living in the old world. And we've got this conflict of trying to do right, and it's why we continue to sin. We talked about the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, a few messages to go, uh, ago. And John says, don't love the world or the things in the world. Don't love the world systems. And the reality here is, is that there's a conflict. But what, what John wants us to know, and what I want you to know, what God wants you to know is, I not only know, have eternal life, I know that I'm a conqueror. I know that I'm a conqueror. Look what it says in verse 4 of chapter 5. Everyone born of God overcomes the world, conquers the world, the world's systems. Now this is not only talking about when we die and we go to heaven. This is talking about our victory over sin. That you and I can have the ability we can know that we have the ability in Christ, in the Holy Spirit that lives in us, to live a holy life. Now, we struggle with sin. Don't get me wrong. I struggle with sin. I'm sure you struggle with sin. 
But the reality is, is that, is that we have this ability now that we can become overcomers, that actually we are overcomers. It says that here. It says that he keeps us safe and the evil one cannot harm us. You know, Satan has no control over your life anymore. God has taken that away from him. Jesus has conquered that on the cross. And you know, you might say, well, sin is fun sometimes. And the reality of that is it can be fun for a season. But you know what sin does is it entangles us and ensnares us. And after a bit, we are slaves to it. We no longer have a choice that we're stuck in it. And we find out it leads to death, just like the Word of God says. It says here in verse 5, verse 3, His commands are not burdensome. That means that they are not oppressive. Instead, His commands set us free. His commands allow us to be who we're to be. And that's the incredible part about this. I know that I'm a conqueror. I can have victory over sin. That I don't have to be stuck in a sin. And he says that that is, you're born of God. You don't continue to sin. He's talking about you can have victory over sin. Isn't that great? Like for all those in the world who don't know Christ, they can't overcome sin. But as a result, we can. We can live a holy life, and it leads to true life, eternal life. Eternal life is not just in the future. Eternal life is the God life that he wants for us, the life of joy and peace and patience and kindness and gentleness and self-control in the midst of this world. That's why this is such an exciting chapter, is because it's telling us we can know we have victory over sin. So do you live like you have victory over sin? You can, because if you know Christ, you are more than our conqueror. And he can bring you the freedom from sin that you can't do yourself. So I know that I'm a conqueror. And all that, plus, I'm going to receive heaven in the end. And that I'm more than a conqueror. That anything in this world is temporal. That anything that we focus on in this world is, is going to be burned up. With the exception of individuals and the exception of the Word of God, right? So I know that I'm more than a conqueror. And then the last one is, I know that I have truth. What an important thing in our world today. You know, I watch the news. I've said it multiple times. What is truth? How do we know what's true and what's false? And look at what John says. Look at what the Word of God says in verse number 20. We know also that the Son of God has come and has given us understanding. He's saying that if you've seen Jesus, you know what, you know what God is like. He's evidence of God, right? He's the, he's the Son of God. He is fully God. Now we can see God. We can understand what God's like. And he came so that we can un, to give us understanding so that we may know him is true, who is genuine, who is reality. You know, when we want to know, is there a God? We look at Jesus. Jesus claimed to be God and he did things only God can do. And so he's our proof that there's a God. He's our proof that there's life after death. He's our proof that, that there's a, there's a uh, salvation available to us. Because look at what he says. Um, you know, John started out this book. In chapter 1 of 1 John, and he goes, I've tasted it, I've seen him, I've heard him, I've, I've been with him, I know he is true, and that is human testimony, right? And oftentimes, you know, look at our court of law, we believe human testimony. You know, we say what we, we witnessed, and that's what John is telling us here. He's written down the things that he's witnessed, the things that he saw. He's saying, I'm telling you that Jesus is truly God. And he was trying to combat those who were spreading falsehood, saying that it wasn't, and that they needed to know more in order to have salvation, in order to have eternal life. And he's telling them, I'm writing this so you know it. I'm writing this so you know that you're more than a conqueror. And I'm also writing it so that you know the truth. It's an interesting passage in verse 6 through um, 10. It can be a little bit difficult, but stick with me. This is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ, Jesus the Messiah, the anointed one. He did not come by water only, but water and blood. And this is the Spirit who testifies because the Spirit is the truth, because he's God too. 
Jesus says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. We know the Spirit is the Spirit of truth. And in God, there is no falsehood. And he's saying here, these three, verse 7, all testify the Spirit, the water, and the blood, and the three are in agreement. We accept human testimony because God's testimony is greater because it's the testimony of God. Here, here's what he's saying is we believe human testimony. When somebody tells us something, we believe it's true. And, and when we find out the facts support it. And he's saying here that these three things are God's evidences that he showed to us that he is truly God, that, that Jesus is truly God. And he's saying it's the water the blood, and the spirit. Let's talk about them real quickly. The water, let's say that's his baptism. Um, at his baptism, do you remember what happened? He was baptized by John, and John saw the spirit come down like a dove and, and rest on Christ himself. That's the spirit's testimony. The, the water is his, his baptism, saying at the start of his ministry, and then if you remember, there was a B. <laughs> there was a um, voice from heaven who said, This is my son in whom I'm well pleased. So God affirmed it. So he's saying this is God's testimony. Here's the truth. Here's the true, true God. Here's the true son. Here's the true way to know you have eternal life. Here's the true way to be a conqueror over your sin. Here is the true way to know the truth. And there's just something in me that has that conviction. And that's the Holy Spirit who's convicted me that this is the truth. So if you're searching for the truth, his word backs up the truth. Jesus is the truth. We not only have man's testimony, we have God's testimony. And we go back to that word, the, the truth is those three things, the, the water, the baptism, and, and, the, and the spirit, and as well as God's voice saying, this is my son. And then we got the third testimony, which is the blood, where he died for our sins on the cross. And that was predicted thousands of years before it happened. And God made it come true just as it said. Why? So you and I would know the truth. And the truth will set us free. That's what's so exciting about this. But here's something that's a, that's a um, caution that John gives us. Look, look at what he says at the rest of that verse. Whoever believes in the Son of God accepts this testimony, this witness. Whoever does not believe has made God out to be a liar because they have not believed the testimony God has given about his Son. And this is his testimony. God has given eternal life, and eternal life is in his Son. See, the whole thing is, what do we do with Jesus? And when we recognize the truth, when God opens our hearts and our eyes up to the truth, we can know we have eternal life. We can know that we're more than conquerors. And we can have assurance. We can be a conqueror, and we can know the truth. Boy, three important things that we've looked at. And then John ends the chapter with this statement, dear children, keep yourselves from idols. Now it seems like he's thrown in a whole different topic, but what is an idol? An idol is something that takes the place of God. And, and idols can be lots of things. It can be a pursuit. It can be success, where, where we want success more than anything. But success can leave us empty. Then there's other things we look for like happiness, it's, it's whatever drives us is our idol. It takes the place of God. Um, it can be something we own or a hobby that takes God's place. It's so easy. It can be a person, a pursuit, or it can be a pleasure. Pleasures can keep us from God. They can take God's place instead of seeking Him. And I think what John is saying here, dear, dear children, keep yourself from idols. He's saying you have this assurance that you have eternal life and that you have that now. You have this assurance that you are more than a conqueror, that you can overcome your sin. You have this assurance that you know the truth. And so what he's saying is, why would you trade that for an idol? Why would you pursue other things? Why wouldn't you pursue Jesus? Why would you pursue things that are going to leave you empty and ensnare you and entangle you? 
Why would you stray from him? Why wouldn't he be your main pursuit? Because it, when you do, you miss out on the life that God has for you. How are you missing out? Have you got off track? Do you, do you realize, do you know that you have eternal life? We know that we can know, right? Do you know that you're more than a conqueror? Are you living by faith and trust in Christ? Or are you living your own life? And do you know that you have the truth? Are you confident? Get into the word. The word is truth. And as we read it, we find out it is true. It proves itself out. You know, that's what's so exciting about this is that we can know these three things. So there's a lot in this world that I don't know. But I know that I have eternal life in the future. And I know that I'm more than a conqueror with my sin. And I know that I have the truth. I know that I know those three things. Based on me? Absolutely not. Based on the Word of God. Based on the promises that God gives us. He says here, whoever has the Son has life. And so that's what I'm banking on. So, hey, let's go to the Lord in prayer. I'm glad you stuck with me the whole way through. You are awesome. I'm glad you joined me. Let's, let's end in prayer together. Father, thank you for the truths of your Word in this passage that we can know beyond a shadow of a doubt that we have eternal life, that we don't have to say, I hope so. And Father, I pray that we'd be honest with ourselves. And if our answer is, I hope so, Lord, I pray that we would begin to seek you with our heart. And we would begin to open ourselves up to the truth of your word. You've promised us whoever has the Son has life. The secret is Jesus, and we call you a liar if we reject that he is God, that he is the Messiah that he is the one who died for our sin. And with him, it comes with eternal consequences. But Father, your love for us lets us know that you want us to have eternal life. You desire that none perish and that right now we can trust you as Lord and Savior and settle that. Say, and just say some words like this and mean them from your heart. Father, I know that I have sinned and fall short of perfection, that I can't make your standard of perfection, of being sinless. But Father, I believe that you'll forgive my sin based on what Jesus did on the cross, that he did live a perfect life, that he did raise from the dead, that his he payment on the cross was for my sin. And when we trust you, and when we say that from our heart, it says that we, from that moment on, you save us. We become your child. We become born of God. And Father, then you give us your Holy Spirit to live inside of us, that we might conquer sin, that we become heirs of eternal life. It's our inheritance. That then we are more than conquerors over this world, that we, will, that we will be in heaven with you forever, that we can live a life that pleases you, that doesn't enslave us and entangle us in sin. And Father, that we can know the truth. Father, thank you for these realities May they be real in our life. Well, we, may we live like we know that they're true. And God, thank you for all that you've accomplished today. May you receive the praise and glory. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Hey, I have had an awesome time with you all. Hey, I hope you come back to our next study next week. Um, we're going to have a guest speaker next week. I'm looking forward to that. And so, hey, have a great week in the Lord. Don't forget to, to send me an email. Um, at fbchapel at zoominternet.net. You can go to our website at fbchapel.org. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for putting in some comments, those of you who did. I'll try to do better at responding to them. But hey, I'm encouraged because you've joined me today. You be encouraged because of what you know to be true. And if you have questions about that, give me a give me an uh, email, send me an email. Or put it in the comments below and I'll be sure to answer. But hey, we've had a great time together standing on the word of God and the promises of God. So blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. I hope you have that same assurance. Have an awesome week.